Hello and welcome to my first video in a series about clinical psychology. I'm particularly focusing on the Pearson Edexcel A-Level course in these offerings. Basically, clinical psychology looks at abnormal behavior in people. So what is abnormal behavior? Simply, it's conduct that's undesirable or worrying. We're thinking here of a pattern of behavior, not just an isolated occurrence. In order to treat people who exhibit abnormal behaviors, a diagnosis must first be made after a study of the patient's symptoms. When looking at symptoms, clinicians focus on things like their severity, how long the patient has had the symptoms, plus information about their health and any social or psychological problems that they may have. Because psychology is not yet an exact science, psychologists don't agree all the time on what causes any particular mental disorder or how it should be treated. A key issue is often where does a pattern of behavior cease to be normal and begin to be thought of as abnormal. One of the ways in which psychologists identify the nature of an illness or other problem is called the four D's of diagnosis. The first D is for deviance. This is where psychologists look at how far away from the norm and how uncommon or deviant a particular behavior is. If there's a high degree of deviance, then the presence of a mental disorder may be indicated. The second D is for dysfunction. Here, psychologists look at how badly a person's deviant behavior affects their life. In order to fully understand the level of dysfunction, a clinician may need to question and probe quite deeply. The third D is for distress. This aspect looks at how far the behavior is causing unhappiness for the patient. It needs to be looked at separately from the other Ds because on the one hand the patient may feel particularly distressed about the situation but still be able to function at a high level in other areas of life. On the other hand, another person might struggle to function as a result of something that other people might not think is very important or serious. The fourth D is for danger. Here we have two elements. The first is where the patient may be considered dangerous to themselves and the second, where they may be thought to be a threat to others. Here again, the extent of the behavior needs to be looked at very carefully. Some psychologists suggest that there should be a fifth D, standing for duration. In other words, the length of time the symptoms have been present. Where people may exhibit problematic behaviors for only a short period of time, they may not need to be treated, whereas others with long-term abnormal behaviors might require intervention. As I've said before, clinical psychology is not an exact science. So clinicians need to be aware of their own potential for subjectivity, as well as that of their patients as they communicate to the psychologist about their symptoms. In order for a proper diagnosis to be made, all the aspects I've just mentioned need to be looked at by the psychologist or psychiatrist. And the severity of the abnormal behavior needs to be measured against a set of standards. In fact, the use of standardized tests is encouraged because they help clinicians to steer away from subjectivity. In my next video, we'll look at the classification of mental disorders. If you're in my online tutor group, please look out for an email with a link to your assignment for this topic. Bye for now. See you next time.